Hello everybody, my name is Fel, and today I will be going over all of the difficult rooms in the Any% percent route uh, for Grabless, so that anybody who just wants to do a Grabless run, or maybe wants to get a little bit better at Bingo, can uh, learn from this video and grow as a Grabless player. Definitely run Grabless categories if you're interested in it, they're super fun. Uh, so the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm just going to go room by room, and show a strat and talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And uh, maybe for some of the more in-depth strats, I'm going to be looking at a video of myself doing a strat and explaining my input step by step. Uh, I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions or anything, anything else you want me to cover, please let me know. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So the first room that people seem to have trouble with in Grabless uh, is this room in Resort Start. Uh, thankfully, this one's pretty easy. It's mostly just a knowledge check. Um, there are a couple different ways to do this. The, uh, the faster way to do this would be to do a hyper bunny hop, uh, then neutral off the wall and upright over the spikes, kind of like this. But as you can see, I cut it pretty close to this, uh, this corner right here. So uh, a little easier way to do it is you can hyper into the wall, do one neutral so you can get higher up, do another neutral off the top, and then upright, and you're good to go. Not too bad. So the second room that people have trouble with uh, is this room, an elevator shaft. Um, it's got a, a tricky part kind of near the end, right about here. So I'll just hit a save state here so I can show. Um, people get here and they're not entirely sure what to do about it, but thankfully this is also just a knowledge thing. Uh, you can time it either when the dust bunny is going to be at the very top or at the very bottom of the screen, or uh, of its cycle rather, and you can just jump over it, just like that. Let me just show you, you can do it the other way too. There we go, it's out of the way, and you're good to go. Finish the room normally. The next room that people have trouble with uh, is this room in Ridge, the first room of Old Trail. Um, so unlike the any percent strat where you go over to that bubble over there, what you want to do is you want to get up to the top of here, and you're going to end up doing uh, a coyote wave dash. And so what I like to do is I like to set up here, and I like to just jump, like just do like a neutral jump up in the air and let the wind push me back a little bit. And then I do like a big coyote wave dash. And if you do it right, you'll get your dash back and can land over here and just finish the room. Moving on, we have the room directly after the last one I just showed. Uh, this is a frame perfect required demo dash. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to want to take this bubble upright. Uh, and then frame perfectly demo dash underneath the uh, the platform and wall kick off the other side when you uncrouch. The most important thing here is making sure to buffer the upright dash out of the bubble. Uh, because that's what guarantees you get a one frame window to execute this demo dash. Like so. First try. Uh, there is another way to do this um, where you use pause buffering and I will show that to you next. So in order to do the pause buffer strap for this uh, room, you just need one pause frame. Um, so the setup starts the same as before, where you want to buffer the upright out of the, uh, the bubble. Um, and what you're looking for is this exact frame. The cue that I use, and I'll highlight on the video, is that the gap in the very top right corner of the screen uh, the gap layer is two pixels wide. And uh, I'm going to restart and kind of go through frame by frame so you can see. The gap is zero pixels wide there right now. It's just to the right of the screen. We can't see it. It is now one pixel wide, and it is now two pixels wide. At that point, I know that I can demo dash and make it through safely. One final screen in Old Trail uh, is another knowledge-based uh, trick. Um, it is possible to get uh, a wall bounce that is so like late and so high that you can make it up. Yep, just like that. But I believe that is also a frame perfect thing. Uh, and it can be quite difficult to execute. However, uh, what you want to do is you want to diagonally demo dash from inside the bubble. So I'll show you what that looks like. Look at how much further I can clear the wall by. I just demo up right from inside the bubble, do the wall bounce, and I'm home free. It's still going to be a higher wall bounce. But it's a lot, a uh, lot more lenient than if you didn't use a demo dash. The last screen in Ridge that I find people have some trouble with is just the spring room. Um, and the spring room is simple enough. You just kind of want to stay on the front of the springs and remember to use your horizontals to 
cover more distance, but as you can see, I made it up just fine. Uh, from death, I have a nice little backup where I can do a reverse hyper into uh, corner boost to bop the snowball, and that also gets me up. Um, but just remember for that room, as long as you're staying on the front of the springs, you are going to have enough to get up there with an upright at the end of it. But there's not a whole lot in 5A, so uh, I figured I would just get that over with first. Uh, the first one is this room, um, but this room has a unique kind of feature that makes it a little easier for us. Uh, while using the gravels variant, if you take a red bubble into a wall, you can grab it and uh, just kind of sit there. This allows you to take your time and uh, get through this room as safely as you see fit, especially with the cycles at the end. You can uh, cling on the wall and wait them out if you need. Just like that. Take it as slowly as you need and you can get through. So the second room in 5A that people may have trouble with is the Seeker Coin Room at the end of Search. Uh, thankfully this one has a pretty easy strat. What you want to do is you want to get to the top of the pillar right in front of the Seeker and just do a full height, non-extended super to the left, like so. The Seeker will always hit the coin. Then you could just uh, take your time, get the coin however you want, and that exit the room. I thought back on it and there was one last screen in 5A I wanted to touch on, uh, and it's the screen after you'd normally do Depth's Corner Boost. Because uh, the normal strat, where you just dash down, you cling onto this thing, doesn't really work very well. Uh, so it can be kind of a confusing screen to figure out grabless. The trick is actually in uh, doing a transition hyper. So you want to hold down right and dash, and then once you're on the other side of the transition, uh, you want to buffer a jump, like right before the transition ends. Uh, so you get something like this. Then what you can do is you can either dash diagonally upright or do an upright demo. Uh, either works, get your dash back, reset the block, and dash upright to the end of the screen. This one's not too hard, just mostly just another knowledge check, and uh, not too bad to get through. Due to the fact that most people who are watching this are probably not going to elect to do 6B in any grabless run, I'm not going to go through the 6B screens that require uh, assistance. However, I will show you this one screen in uh, 6A which uh, I consider to be kind of tricky. Uh, it's just a, kind of a precise neutral pattern, but uh, I'll see what I can show off. Uh, and while it doesn't require it, getting your dash back at the beginning here is really helpful. Because you can just do that, and uh, you're pretty much good to go. It's not, not too, too complicated. You just want to stay high here and stay low there. Make sure to get a jump off by the end of the Kevin, and upright to victory. There you go. A room some people find tricky in 2000 meters is this one, uh, but it just requires a precise demo dash and a climb jump at the end, and you're good. The last room of 2500 meters is what many people consider to be the biggest gate keeping people out of this category. Uh, it's very precise, it has a dash that is both pixel perfect on the X and the Y axis, uh, and a very precise setup to even give you a chance at getting that pixel. So uh, I'll just walk through the uh, the setup step by step uh, for both the pause strat and the unpaused version of this room, which is the same thing as the pause strat, but with a little more YOLO. Uh, so I'll go through the pause strat first. Um, you want to set yourself up on the very right hand side of this platform, as I'm doing right here. And then you want to do a one frame hyper bunny hop off of this platform. If you hold jump on this hyper for anything longer than the minimum uh, hyper height, then you'll crash right into these uh, spikes right here. So you want to make this hyper as short as possible. Then you're going to bunny hop and end up dashing up left and around the middle of these vines. I'll just show that real quick. OK, so just get back to this frame. Uh, I dashed right around the middle of the vines, and it's going to take me up to this wall on the left here. And at that point, I'm going to want to do two full height buffered neutrals. As, as good as these neutrals can be, I want them, because I want them to get me as high up on this wall as I possibly can. OK, perfect. And then I'm going to get to the wall, and I'm going to pause. And thankfully, in this clip, I actually landed on the exact right frame that I wanted. I'm about to show that in a sec. Yeah, right here. Uh, if I land above this, I actually like to slide down onto this frame. And as you can see by my input display, 
I am holding up left into the wall, so it'll slow my uh, descent into the wall. And then when I see this exact frame, which I have two indicators for, uh, Madeline's pants right here, the top of her pants, line up with the top of the spiral in a straight line. And uh, Madeline's hand, as she's holding onto the wall, is half, like the top of her hand is the same height as the bottom of this spiral. So it's kind of like halfway in between the spiral and the, the dark in the background. Uh, you can find other uh, cues for this, like you could probably find one with her hair lining up with this spiral. Uh, but I just pointed out things that I use to figure out if I'm on the right frame. So from this frame, you want to unpause the game and buffer a full height jump out to the right here. Uh, I want to do that. I'm going to repause again when I get around this part, because I'm looking for another frame right here. And this one's a lot easier to spot. I'm going to buffer to it again and see that middle of the gap in Madeline's pants line up exactly with this vertical line in the background. You can see that, that she is perfectly in the middle of this kind of square thing. Uh, after this happens, what you want to do is you want to demo dash to the right. And you want to keep your demo dash button held after you've pressed it so that down is still held and you're going to remain crouched when you slide along the top of this block. And then you just dash forward to the spring, up to battle in, and you're home free to go. The Palsus version of this strat uses the exact same cues, only just hopes to get the right frames for jumping off the wall and the demo dash. For the end of this room, you could just copy my movement and use four short jumps off the blocks to getting on top of the right one, and then just jump up and dash up twice to victory. For flag 15, you're just going to need to use this floating block here, and I'm just going to show two ways to do it. So for flag 11 and flag 2, I'm going to do exactly what I did for 2500 meters and uh, watch a video and explain what I'm doing. Uh, so for flag 11, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash up left from this point, and before I hit the wall, I'm actually going to start holding jump. As you can see on my input display down here, I haven't hit the wall yet and I'm holding jump. Uh, this is so that my gravity gets halved when I'm at the very, very bottom of this uh, block. So I'm going to keep holding jump. And then right at the bottom of the platform, I'm going to so jump is still held. And I'm going to hold up and left into the wall. And what this is going to do is it's going to slow me down heavily. And so I'll just kind of let that play out. You can see that I, I really, really slow down at the end. Uh, and I still have jump held just to make this all consistent. And then I'm going to buffer until Madeline is basically directly underneath this uh, spinner right here. Onto this frame specifically. So Madeline is basically directly underneath the spinner. Then I'm going to demo dash up left and kick off the wall. So I did a little neutral off the wall. So I have control, I'm on the wall and I have a dash. Then I think I'm just gonna do another short neutral and then dash up and jump over to flag 10. Uh, you could also do this strap pause list, as I'm going to show here. Uh, it's just a little bit more precise uh, timing-wise. But uh, that's it. Not too bad. And last, but certainly not least, we have Flag 2. Uh, flag 2 gets a little easier with the knowledge that I'm going to bestow upon you. Um, Execution-wise, I don't think it's that tricky, but uh, I've definitely seen a lot of very good players uh, struggle with this. So let's go through it. Uh, you just want to get over to this crystal like you normally would in flag two uh, and then dash up right to the wall. Uh, and then things start getting a little tricky. What you want to do from this point is you want to slide down the wall. And when you're at around this part of the wall, uh, you know, obviously before you hit the spikes and die, you want to do two neutrals. So one, I'm going to do two. And now the crystal has respawned. And that, that was just to, to delay for the crystal to respawn. Now you want to slide down little bit lower maybe around here uh and then do a full height jump left off the wall i jump full height and as like you can see i do not die to these spinners because i'm low enough on the wall over here keep holding left until you are to the left of this crystal and you kind of fall down at a, about level height or a little bit below it as you can see i am right now and then you want to dash up right through this crystal and back to the wall this puts you back at the wall with two dashes. Then what you can do is you can do a couple of neutrals to maybe set up your position uh, so that you can dash up and do another neutral on the top 
after you've cleared these spikes. Okay, so I've done that, I'm through. Now I wanna do one last neutral on the wall up here and then dash up left to victory. And there you have it. You have completed everything that is difficult in Gravelous. And so there you have it. That is every room that I consider to be a difficult roadblock and the uh, any percent route for Gravelous that goes through both 5A and 6A. Uh, going through 5B and 6B definitely present uh, a whole plethora of more challenges, but so I thought this was kind of an easier introduction to the category uh, that goes through those chapters in particular. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you learned something. Uh, please let me know if there's other content you'd like to see regarding Grabless or anything like that. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it.